Hi, I'm Dr. Pierce, and welcome to this video on concept mapping, in which I will introduce you to some of the key features of a good concept map, and then show you how to construct one using the program CMAP. Now, I've looked at a lot of uh, concept map and mind mapping programs over the years, but I still always come back to CMAP for a number of reasons that I will show you in just a minute. As you probably know, a concept map is a visual that you design to help you deconstruct and understand a topic or a concept. The beauty of a completed concept map is that it's yours and it represents how you think about the topic and how you organize it in your head. So as you make the map, you are solidifying your understanding, you're identifying concepts and, con uh, and connections that you understand and others that you might need more clarification on. And when it's all finished, you have this excellent quick review study guide. So that is a win-win all around. Let's first look at some key features of all concept maps. So here's a concept map on photosynthesis that I created with CMAP. You can see that it has the following features. First of all, the big concept is clearly identified, and it's often found in the middle of the concept map, but it doesn't have to be. The next level concepts, the next big level, are connected directly to it, and this sort of hierarchy continues down uh, the organizational chain. Concepts are connected by arrows to show the direction of the relationship. Each connection has a linking word uh, to describe how the concepts are connected. So for example here, the light you can read this as the light dependent reactions require water. Uh, next, each concept is used only once and what that does is to ensure that connections to other concepts occur. Uh, color coding can also be used to enhance the map. Uh, for example, I decided to color all the major molecules in this map pink uh, so I can quickly identify those. And finally, the map is pretty organized, um, I think anyways. So how do we construct such masterpieces? The first thing you have to do is go download CMAP onto your computer and you can use that using this URL. Now if we go to the site, if we go to the site, uh, you will find this sort of a screen. You gotta put some information in and, uh, and then you can go ahead and, and choose which download uh, you need for your computer. Uh, if it asks you to update Java, you gotta do that first. Um, but once you open up the program, you should be looking at something like this. Now the very first thing I would do is go under the format uh, menu and open the styles tab and that will give you this particular dialog box. Uh, and you might want to do that first because you're going to be using that a lot. So the first thing you want to do is to add a new concept. And you can see it says here to double click to create a new concept. And then you can type in your topic of interest. So I'm going to create a short concept map on basketball. And um, once you have that, you can, you, can, you can move it around however you want. Okay, put that in the middle. Okay. The next thing you want to do is uh, link a new concept. So I'm going to link a concept from basketball and I'm going to link it to something called personnel. Okay, so here's, I'm going to put uh, personnel. Okay. And then I'm actually going to do that. I'm going to do another one and two players. Okay. Now, what about these question marks? Okay. You need to make sure that you use clear linking terms uh, to, to link the two concepts. And that's what I like about CMAP. It actually forces you to do that. So here, I'm going to simply say that basketball requires personnel. And uh, personnel could be or such as players. So basketball requires personnel such as players. So that's a, a good way to start uh, linking a few concepts. Um, the next thing I want to show you is how you can link 
related concepts to an existing linking word. So for example, players aren't the only personnel you need. You might need things like this. Uh, so to add another one, you click on and drag that arrow. And I'm going to add coaches to there. And I'm also going to add referees. Okay. So again, there's no use adding such as coaches, such as players, such as referees. You could do it all from the same uh, same linking word. Um, the next thing you can do, I'll move these around a little bit. The next thing you can do is you can actually link existing concepts to each other. So for example, I can link coaches to players simply again by dragging that arrow uh, and linking it and voila, there is your linking word. So I would say coaches teach players or coach them. You can do whatever you like there. Um, so that is sort of the initial uh, information that you need just to link concepts. So here we have a more fleshed out concept map with a lot of different concepts such as skills and rules and types of points and things like that. So I just put some stuff in there. So now what I want to show you is adding connections. So once, once you get the basics down, now you start looking for connections to be made. So for example, I can, um, I can take referees and what's the connection between referees and rules? Well, referees enforce the rules. Um, you might link um, shooting fouls. If you know anything about basketball, a shooting foul is going to um, lead to a free throw or two or three. And so, so again, you want to be looking around your map to try to make legitimate connections between the concepts that you have on there. Sometimes you want to make a connection, for example, from a player to skills. So you, you put that down there and because players have to have or learn skills. But this is starting to make your concept map look a little bit messy. So what you could do is you could just drag this over here and sort of create a right angle connection. And so again, players... Um, learn or must have skills again what, whatever you choose to do there um, the other thing that you can do sometimes again let's do another one from players to um, fouls okay so players commit fouls so uh, let's put commit in there but again that, that just makes things look messy so I'm going to drag this uh, so I'm going to drag this box up here, and but but again, where, where am I going to put this such that it, it's going to be be helpful? Well, I can't. So I'm going to put it here, and I'm going to show you a trick uh, with the lines. So what I can do now is I I can if I click on this arrow here, I can go to. Um, I can go to line under the styles tab that's over there and see under the shapes here this is really kind of cool because you can choose the type of shape you want so I want to actually use this one for a minute and I'm going to click on that and see where you get this extra box in here that allows you to drag and create a right angle there and that looks a whole lot neater than what I had before uh, the other thing you could do again, I'm going to I'm going to connect coaches to timeouts because coaches call timeouts. Another thing you can do is you could um, I don't like it as much, but if you if you wish, you can also do a curved line. So by clicking on this, you can actually create a curved line in there. Okay, um, this one. You might, you might do the same thing. Curved line on that and drag that up so that's around the top. If you like curved lines, you can, you can play around with that. Uh, the next thing I want to show you is, um, is color. Okay, So for example, I might want to take all my, all my 
personnel. My uh, coaches hold the command key down, the referees and the players, and I want them all to have a font of blue. And I want the boxes that they're in to have a color of yellow. And I might even want to put a funky purple shadow on them if you wish. That's all just that's all just aesthetics at this point. Um, but you've got you've got things that you can color code with. You can color code lines as well. Um, but again, how you want to structure that is is again what's going to make the most sense to you. And then finally, I'm going to show you something you can add if you want to add more information, but you don't want to clutter up your concept map with a bunch of words. So if you um, click on a box and then under the tools section, you click annotate. So I know you can't see that, but uh, tools and annotate. And then you'll get a little annotation box. And so I can add here uh, three points are awarded when the shot is made outside the 7.24 meter arc. Okay, so I've got some information here, awarded, and, and now I can just close this, but you'll notice this, this little box that you can move around, you might put it right underneath there, and that shows you that there's more information, and you can just double click on that, and open it up to see what's there. And of course, once you're all done, under the File tab, you can export it as an image, you can export it as, um, um, as a PDF, um, make sure you save it, and that's C-mapping. So that's the basics, there's lots of other things you can play around with, but I hope uh, this is helpful for you as you begin to explore the uh, creation and the value of concept maps. Thanks for watching.